So Israel is like that prodigal son story who returns to his father's land after being gone for a long, long time, returns to his father's land, and the father blesses him. Even before he drew near, he begins blessing him. I believe that there's a picture of Israel in that story. Watch this. You're going to see it right now. Here we go. So the lost son returning to his father's land. That's what we see here. So here's a picture or actually a model of what Herod's temple looked like during the time of Jesus. And he was teaching from there. And it says that now all the tax collectors here in Luke chapter 15, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near Jesus and listened to him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. And so he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and lost one of them, does not leave the other ninety-nine in the open pasture to go after the one that is lost until he finds it? This is huge, guys. Watch this. You're going to see something amazing in these numbers right here. Watch this. So he leaves the 99 to go after that one, right? That would be like that 1%, right? He, the shepherd leaves to go find that one. And, and here we're seeing that the Jewish people were scattered all over the world, right? All over the entire world. And the Jewish people actually make up less than 1%. Of the 8 billion people, the worldwide population, less than 1%. And by the way, they get like 32% of all the Nobel Peace Prizes, which is amazing, like in science and in engineering and all these different things, because God has blessed them. All right? God has a special blessing upon the Jewish people. A lot of people don't like that, especially a lot of people in the church that don't believe God has a plan for Israel anymore, but, the, but he does. And it's an amazing thing. So let's go back into this. There are, there are less than 1% of the 8 billion worldwide population. So what did Jesus just say? He would That the good shepherd leaves 99 of the sheep to go after that one. He said, which one of you would, wouldn't do that, right? So that's what he's talking about. And when he has found it, Jesus said, he puts it on his shoulders rejoicing. Wow. So he's very excited when he finds that that 1%, that lost sheep. Here he is excited that he finds this shepherd finds that 1%, right? So let's continue on. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you that in that same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one who repents, over one, than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. So let's look at the story here, the prodigal son story. It continues on here as Jesus is talking in Luke chapter 15. We're seeing now the most famous story, I think, ever, short story ever, The Prodigal Son. In fact, Charles Dickens called this the greatest short story ever told. Isn't that amazing? Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to hit that button and the bell. We're doing a series right now, Jesus in the Old Testament. You won't miss anything. Check out the former videos as well, the, the last ones, and comment with your questions or any comments. I love to respond to those, and I love to see them. So let's get into this presentation, you guys. So here it is. And he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate, right? The inheritance that is coming to me. So he's like saying, Father, you're as good as dead to me, basically. I want my inheritance right now so I could leave you. And what did they yell out when Jesus was up there with Pontius Pilate? Crucify him. They totally rejected him all the way, just like that prodigal son rejected his father. And Jesus said this, I and the father are one, right? That's in John chapter 10, verse 30. Jesus said that. And so he divided his, back to that story of the prodigal son, right? He divided his wealth between them, between those two sons of his. And he gathered everything together and he went on a journey to a distant country. 
What happened to the Jewish people, especially around 70 AD and also 135 AD with that evil uh, Roman emperor that, that basically wanted to wipe them off the uh, face of the earth, right? Wipe them off the map. And he renamed this area Palestinia, Assyria, Palestinia, which is where they get the name Palestine. He sent them out as slaves to all of these regions of the Roman Empire. So they were spread all over the world. That's what happened. They were, the Jewish people were all in a foreign land, right? Just like that prodigal son. And there he squandered his estate in wild living. Now, when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began doing without. So what happened in the 1930s? And even before that, right, we saw those evil things that happened to the Jewish people with, um, you know, there was, there was all the persecutions they went through, pogrom after pogrom, massacre after massacre, uh, the Inquisition, all these different things, right? The Spanish Inquisition was horrible for the Jewish people. But here in 1930, we see Hitler and the Third Reich, this evil Nazi regime, right? And what do we see here? That, that this is Nuremberg. This is this evil place that was, uh, it was designed off of Pergamos. Remember Jesus said in the book of Revelation, he talked about Pergamos being the seat of Satan. Did you know that they set uh, Hitler's podium up in that place? Here's one of their nighttime things, of the events that they did there. But they sent his podium up in the very place, in the model where Zeus, the statue of Zeus was. Isn't that interesting? Because Zeus was the statue that Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth put up, which was he was an evil antichrist type of a guy. So here in Nuremberg, we see that happening, and the poor Jewish people were being persecuted at that time. Here's the the museum in Berlin of the actual uh, structure of what it looks like there in Pergamos, where they found that. So it's like the German people back then were almost worshiping this place, this place that Jesus says is the seat of Satan. It's pretty, pretty horrible stuff, right? So here's Hitler talking about this design of that place. But at the same time, what was happening to the Jewish people, right? The Jewish people were in these concentration camps, and they were suffering big time, just like that prodigal son. And they were without food. I mean, it was just a horrible, horrible time for them. So he went and he hired himself out during this famine, right? That son that misses his father now at this point. He went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed pigs. Wow, not a good job. To feed the pigs. So he longed to have his fill of the carob pods that the pigs were eating, and no one was giving him anything. No one in this foreign land would help him. That's what happened to the Jewish people, right? Remember that? Even the church, even the, the lot of the Lutherans in Germany ignored the fact that these Jewish people were being persecuted. They didn't want to hear it. A lot of them. Some of them did step up. Bonhoeffer, and there's a few others. I had an uncle, actually, a great uncle, who um, had a tattoo of a number on his inside of his arm and missing toes because he hid his Jewish people, his Jewish friends, his neighbors from those evil Nazis. And they busted him, and they made him walk barefoot in the snow to a concentration camp. So here in Luke 15, it says, But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired laborers have more than enough bread? right? But I'm dying here from hunger. He's dying from hunger and he comes to his senses. So I will set out and go to my father, or you could say to my father's land, right? So here it is, or go to my father's land. Where was, where's the father's land? God's land, actually, Israel. The land of Israel belongs to God, the father of the Jewish people. And they're going to come back to him someday. It's going to be amazing all the way to him, to Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Jesus, their Messiah. So here's a boat that they, they called the Exodus. And, um, and this is the full of Jewish people who were in concentration camps and persecuted. And they're going back to their father's land, the land of Israel. But when he came to his senses, here in that prodigal son story, and it says, and, and will say to him, so he's saying, I will say to my father, I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. 
Remember when Jesus came down the Mount of Olives and he entered in through that east gate, riding on the, the donkey, just like in Zechariah, it says, and they were waving palm branches at him, yelling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is him who comes in the name of the Lord. They were expecting him as the Messiah right here. They didn't realize he was coming to be crucified for the first time. Remember, they rejected him, and Jesus cried out to them, and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who have been sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. So Jerusalem became a desolate place. Remember this evil man, General Titus, that came down with the the Roman legions, and they came down and they took in 70 AD and burned the temple and killed thousands of Jewish people. Here's uh, the Roman archway, the Titus, the archway of Titus, where you could see the menorah and the table of showbread. So this is well-documented history that this happened. And this was the end of Israel for a long time. And, and you're going to see that. So watch this. So Matthew 23, For I say to you from now on, Jesus said, You will not see me until you say, this is what he was telling them on that day, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Speaking of himself. So he said in Luke chapter 15, that, that son who wanted to come back to his father. He says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He's talking to his father here. Treat me as one of your hired laborers or your hired servants. So he said that he was rehearsing what he was going to say to his father right there. So he set out and he came to his father. So he set out and he came to his father's land, right? Just like the Jewish people have done not too long ago, you guys. That wasn't that long ago. Here's that boat, the Exodus, where they came back to the Father's land. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him, and he felt compassion for him. So the father's looking, and he sees his son far away, and he already had compassion on them. Just like God has compassion on the Jewish people today, even though, for the most part, they have not received Jesus yet. Many of them are, though, by the way. There's more. It's a growing trend. More and more Jewish people are giving their lives to Jesus Christ. They're becoming born again followers of of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, their Messiah. So he says, and and here in Luke 15, it says, and he ran, the father ran and embraced him and kissed him. So he's already blessing his son, who's still smelly and stinky from from the pigsty, I would imagine. And here's a Chicago Daily Sun-Times headline news. Its name is Israel. U.S. recognizes the Jewish state, 1948, right? May 14th. And then then later, 1967, they won this incredible battle by miracles. And here they are back in Jerusalem for the first time in the actual city and here near the Temple Mount, that old wall, the Western Wall. So it's a beautiful thing that God has blessed the Jewish people. He's calling them back. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. This is actually a picture of Joseph, but it was beautiful because he's given this beautiful robe His father, right? So it's kind of a picture of the prodigal son getting the best robe put on him. And bring the fatted calf and slaughter it. And let's eat and celebrate. Like, let's have a barbecue and celebrate, right? That's what the father's saying. He's like, we need to celebrate. My son is home. He's coming home. He's back. This is so awesome. I love this, don't you? All right, so then what does he do at this point? For this my son, the father says, of mine was dead and has come back to life again. Remember the, the Ezekiel chapter 36, maybe 37, the dry bones, right? And God asks Ezekiel, can these bones come back to life? Ezekiel's like, I don't know, can they? You show me. And what does God do? He shows him a vision where he puts 
the tendons and the muscles and the skin back on those bones and breathes life back into them, life from the dead. And that chapter is about God bringing the, the Israel from the four corners of the world back to their country to be blessed. So it's happening in our time, guys. It's amazing. For this, my son was dead and has come back to life, or he's come to life again. Wow. And then Romans 11 shows us a picture of this as well, you guys. So it says in verse 5, it says, For if the rejection proves to be the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Life from the dead, you guys. For this son of mine was dead, that father said, and has come back to life again. Wow. This is good reason to celebrate. We should be celebrating the rebirth of Israel, my friend. We should not be those Christians who hate Israel and boycott and divest them. That's wrong. So he was lost and has been found, the father continues, and they began to celebrate. Wow. Now, I want to go into this. If you've ever seen the Jesus Revolution movie, um, Pastor Chuck Smith did one of the most amazing things at that time. It was not a popular thing that he did, but he supported Israel. In fact, he used to get letters. He talked about it. He used to get letters from other pastors in the area saying, like, what are you doing? What are you? God's done with Israel. We're the new Israel as the church. And he said, no, that's not what the scripture says. He would, and he kept supporting Israel. In fact, they gave millions of dollars to the, the state of Israel. And a lot of people ask, like, why was Calvary Chapel such a powerful move? Why did God choose them? I believe partly it was because of their heart for Israel. That's what I believe. All right, let's continue. Here's a picture of the Jesus Revolution. This is a real picture of Lonnie Frisbee and Chuck Smith down there where they did the baptisms and, and Pirate's Cove. Pretty cool stuff, right? All right, let's get back into the prodigal son story in Luke 15. Now his older son, so this father's older son, was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. Uh-oh. And he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring about these things, what they could be, Right. And he said to him, your father, your brother, excuse me, has come and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf. We're having a big barbecue, guys, because he has received him back safe and sound. Safe and sound. How does that make you feel? Israel's a nation again, and they're safe in their land right now. But he became angry, this other son, who never left him, right? And was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. Here's a picture of what a lot of churches believe in, you guys. They believe in boycotting, divest, and sanctioning against Israel. And it's wrong. Here this church says that they boycotted Hewlett Packard because uh, it's a Hewlett Packard free church. <laughs> and this is actually out of my hometown of Santa Cruz that they did this, which is really stupid. It's a really, it's like the liberal Mecca of the world there, by the way. And they were boycotting Israel by doing that. So here you see divest for the Palestinians, divest in who? Israel. They hate Israel, you guys. It's a weird thing. So Luke 15 continues, but he answered and said to his father, this, this other son that was jealous and angry about his other son coming back, right? Look, for so many years I have been serving you and I have never neglected a command of yours. That's a lie. <laughs> and yet you never gave me a goat, a young goat, so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, he's not saying my brother, he's saying this son of yours came who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fatted calf for him. Now, remember Joseph's story in Genesis 38, there's like this, what a lot of people think is like an ill-fitted chapter. Like, what is that doing in there? Well, Judah sleeps with Tamar. He thought she was a prostitute, right? So there's a picture of that prodigal son story in there. And what does he do? He gives up his staff. So, hey, check out that episode. If you haven't seen it, it's really good. It'll show you a lot in this whole story about you know God's plan here. So let's go back to the scriptures. You know, this other, he says, when this son of yours, you know, has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fatted calf for him. You're, you're having a huge barbecue and celebration for him. He's, so he's angry, he's jealous. And he said to him, son, the father says, son, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. 
But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live. He is he was dead and now he's alive, the father says. We have to celebrate. And was lost and has been found. Whoa. That reminds me of the song Amazing Grace, right? I was once lost and I have been found. That's what we see in this scripture in Luke 15. So Israel today is a blessed country. They've come back to their father's land. They haven't quite come all the way back into his arms yet. Many of them are, though, through Jesus, through Yeshua. And someday they all will because the verse the, in uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 25, what does it say? It says that when that last number of Gentiles has come in, that means come to Christ, then all of Israel will be saved, as the scriptures say. That has not been fulfilled yet, but it will someday. <laughs> all right, you guys. Hey, check out this playlist, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You don't want to miss that. And you can click on that and you're going to see even more. And I think it'll bless your heart as we discover Jesus on every page, every part of the Tanakh, every part of the Old Testament. I love you guys. God bless you.